I was, uh, this is take two, because today's readings on November 19th are from 2nd Maccabees, but every once in a while my dyslexia makes me laugh. Because instead of Maccabees, I said Mab Tickies, and I don't even know where that came from. So, that's interesting. It actually looks brighter in my camera than it does outside. Um, it may take longer than I want it to get up uploaded. 2nd Maccabees... Uh, the morning prayer readings, or no, the office of readings this morning were from Zechariah. The weaving of the words of the Holy Spirit. The gospel reading today is Zacchaeus in the tree. And he, he was a little man. There's that Protestant song about a wee little man was he. But, uh, Asking the Holy Spirit to help you as you reflect on readings. Asking God to speak to your heart. It is the issue of our time. Life. I know I'm going to get start getting repetitive when I'm talking about biology being the study of life. But uh, the transgender issue and the homosexual push that are pervading the times that we live in are still running roughshod against life. Anything that is unfruitful, lustful, self-love that is not designed to advance the species a erroneous climate claim that human beings are a cancer to the planet and that the planet's more important than human beings what from a scientific perspective how in the world how in the world would the most important thing on the planet not be human beings. If you exterminated every human being on the planet, if you went back to, you know, 150 million years ago and you exterminated every human being on the planet, you know, okay, we need to go now, thank you. <laughs> they were on their phone. <laughs> and now they're swerving because they're still on their phone. Um, uh, if you exterminated every human being on the planet, you just left this wonderful, beautiful earth, right? Oh, well, human beings have destroyed it. I mean, you can think of Starbuck in uh, Battlestar Galactica, right? They go to that earth that's like earth from the future, and there's that crash Starbuck, and she realizes that she's like dead or something, or she's an angel or whatever she is. The ambiguousness of it. She's like an altar Cristo, right? But uh, the point is, without human beings, there is no intelligence to the planet. There is no ultimate intelligence to the planet. Number one, because there's no shame. Part of the coupling and part of the reason why it's a happy fall of Adam was that because of the nature of sin, Christ came to redeem and restore. So if you just say, you know what, human beings are still a cancer, they're not worth saving, just get rid of all of them. And then you'll have this wonderful, beautiful planet. Well, I know that the atheists try to say, well, there's, there's, there's no causality. There, there, <laughs> there's no such thing as an infinite cause that just that just dodges the question it just dodges the question well who created this and who created that there is an uncaused cause Woo. this is every morning this is every day um the uncaused cause has within its nature the creation the the, the desire to create the desire to draw back. So in the readings today, 
uh, uh, I even searched his name and I, I've got to remember how it's spelled. It's not, it's, it's, it, it's a beautiful Jewish name. And he was a prophet and they were forcing him to eat pork. And then because they were friends with him, like Elisria or something, I'm, I'm not saying it right. I spelled it out and searched it because I was just like, wow, that's such a cool name. But he was put to death. He was, he was an Old Testament martyr before Christ who believed in God's law and believed God's law so much that they were trying to force him to eat pork. You say it in the Psalms that like, you know, they're trying to force you to eat pork. I mean, they're trying to force anybody to go against God's law. Well, even if you don't think you understand who or what or, you know, the nature of God. Obviously, if you held your breath for 25 minutes, you would be trying to go against the natural law that says, you know what, you need oxygen to stay alive. So try holding your breath for 25 minutes and see what happens. It just doesn't work. You just can't, you can't just jump up in the air and expect that I'm going to infinitely jump like even on the moon, which has one sixth of the Earth's gravity, you still can't infinitely jump up. You just get six times the acceleration upward, but then you still come back because the moon still has a rotational gravity. So you still will be pulled back to the moon. It's just a lot slower. You know, and the moon is not flat either. And the moon is not hollow. All we have to do is do an x-ray scan and you can see you can see that there's a density inside there. I mean the entire makeup it's a it's a rock. <laughs> it's a rock. It's, a, it's an enormous asteroid that has been pulled into Earth's gravity but because of its own gravity creates an elliptical semicircular orbit. But anyway, that's that's too sciencey for people that want to invent their own religion based on I don't believe you. Like I, I when I used to be at the high school, I used to I, I used to talk to this really awesome kid that had autism. And he he was still a great communicator. And we still had great conversations. One thing he said, he says, you know, there's one kind of person that bothers me, Mr. Andy. And I'm just like, okay, who? He said, flat earthers. And I was like, you know, that's interesting. Because I think that the entire premise of the argument of flat earth is built on, I don't believe you. You don't have any scientific claims. You don't have any, you don't have any real hard factual evidence. You just have, well, they said it and I don't believe them. And he looked at me and he nodded his head because there were so many times we'd had these great conversations and he'd say, well, you know, that's true. Because we would challenge each other. We would challenge each other with our reason and just be like, well, what about this? We'd be like, well, that's a good point. And that's why I'm saying that when it comes down to it, I, I want to say his name right, but I'm not going to say it right. Elizria, I, it's not his name. And I'm, I'm going to be so embarrassed when I see how dyslexic I pronounce his name. Because I searched it this morning. But anyway, in 2 Maccabees, he, he chooses death. And they're like, look, you can just eat a meat that's okay with God's law and just say that you're eating pork. And he's like, no, I can't. Because even if I'm pretending in, in my outward reflection to other people, it will look like I'm defaming my Lord. And when Zacchaeus is climbing the tree to see his Lord, and when he exclaims, behold, behold, I will pay back everything that's owed. And if I was cheating, I will pay back four times or six times as much. Because as an outward sign, it's like, you know what, Jesus, it's not enough that I climb this tree. Because I climb this tree because I believe you. I believe that you are the Lord my God. And I am making an effort to just see you. 
Like, I didn't ask you to come hang out with me. But, like, when people choose death, when our martyrs choose death, they choose their own personal death to promote the kingdom of God because they will not defame it. But when you choose to kill another, and when you choose to mutilate to the point where you have neutered yourself and an entire generation for the sake of selfishness, that has nothing to do with life. That has everything to do with your own personal death. Your flesh. I want. And you think that that's going to keep you alive. No, you have neutered your offspring. You have destroyed life. I would sacrifice my life to promote the life of my nephew's children. My niece's great-grandkids. I would sacrifice my own life. I would take a bullet for the kingdom of God, which is nothing more than the kingdom of life here. Because the most important life on this planet is human beings that can plant trees, that can pick up garbage. The deer that run around do not have enough wisdom to do mathematics enough to say, you know what, what we really need to do is we need to plant about 15,000 trees. We need, to, we need to reroute this water, you know, about 14 miles. They can't do that. They don't have the mathematical complex intelligence enough to be able to say, you know, we need to figure this out. They're not ashamed enough of their, the sins of their fellow man enough to say, you know what, I'm not going to disgrace the nature which keeps us alive. I'm going to ascend to this tree and I'm going to look out over the distance and I'm going to see a God that wants us to keep surviving. But I will not defame the Lord. And even if it's like, well, you know, in my heart I'm keeping your commandments, but I can't tell anybody I'm a Christian. I can't tell anybody I'm a Catholic. I can't tell anybody I'm pro-life. You can do whatever you want. I'm, I'm just pro-life for me. You're still eating meat. That's not outwardly showing, I believe. Take, the own, take your own personal sacrifice, your own self-mortification. Don't be selfish and say, you know what, I'm too afraid of what they're going to say. Be unapologetically pro-life, pro-biology. Because the most important anatomy on this planet is the heart of Jesus Christ. Because he came to restore the nature of Adam and Eve. The life that we need to continue the pursuit of happiness. We need the protectors of life. We need them to guard the sanctuary. 